So our first speaker, uh, Barack Shoster, is a co-founder of Bridge Crew, who I have seen your work in a lot of different open source repositories over the years, uh, things that we use internally to help scan our cloud infrastructure code and do cloud assessments across uh, AWS. So we check off TerraGoats, kind of a fun playground for you know, just breaking in and scanning uh, infrastructure code similar to application code, Prowler we use for assessments, all sorts of good work uh, coming from Barack and then also all the folks over at Bridge Crew. So let me give you my heartfelt thank you for your contributions to the open source community. Um, in this session, we're, we're looking at tagging strategies, which I'll be very interested to see how you present this. And obviously we all need to do this, but it's something I feel like everybody struggles with, you know, what metadata needs to be there and how to do it consistently. So really fun topic underway. Uh, Barack, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you and you can take it away for the first session this morning. Right, thank you, Eric. And thank you for this lovely introduction. And Good morning, everybody. I'm super excited to be here at the uh, CloudSec Next Summit. Um, yeah, let's give it a go. Um, so today we're going to talk about tagging strategies of cloud resources. Why is it so important? And what are some of the best practices that the cloud providers are recommending you to follow? And we'll also talk about a uh, new open source that the Bridge Routine at Palo Alto have just released, named Your, to help you have a consistent way of tagging and tracing cloud resources, assuming they are managed in infrastructure as code. So like many stories in uh, cloud security, our story is beginning with a log record. One Friday night, I received the following message. There is unencrypted EVS volume in one of our AWS accounts. And the thing that I needed to do next is to ask, um, why am I getting a phone call for that at the middle of the night? So PagerDuty gave me an alert and I need to start to understand where this EBS volume is coming from within my AWS account. And we started a, a triage thread within our group in Slack, asking who created that volume. But hey, this volume was created by a service account. This is what the audit trail in AWS in the cloud trail is showing to me. And then it was followed by a team member asking who triggered a release on Friday. Nobody should trigger a release to production in private. And then another team member who is responsible and owning the, all the different instances in production have told us that this service account named Terraform was provisioning our Terraform resources um, is being triggered by 142 different engineers that are pushing code to our infrastructure every day. And this code is managed across 50 different repositories. So the thing that I had to do is the obvious solution, go to AWS Security Hub and try to get more data. I went into AWS Security Hub, I saw three non-compliant volume, uh, which, which are unencrypted, and I didn't know what to do. So I did the, the common solution that we always do when we have a security issue. Um, I opened the JIRA with the last person who might know where this EBS volume is coming from. But Guy Sulema had actually did not know who from the 142 engineers have done this. So he started to escalate the JIRA and move it between assignees, creating a lot of noise and destruction within our organization. Everybody went through these JIRA tickets, put their own comment that in the end, we understood that this specific volume is coming from a Terraform repository. So this whole scenario is from demo accounts and, and demo code, but it could have happened in, in real life. So over here, I can see that I have infrastructure as code block written in Terraform saying, hey, my EBS volume is unencrypted because it's an existing volume that if I'll apply encryption on, will get purged, deleted, and then reinitiated with encryption key and we will delete all of the data. So it had the right reason, at least temporarily, to have an encrypted volume and there probably should be a migration process to an encrypted one. 
but a single line of code created a lot of noise within my organization because we didn't know who owns this code block, who owns this cloud resource, and where's the best place to fix that, which repository does it belong to, and what should I do next in order to triage it. So the process was kind of long. We started with pager duty alert, a Slack thread, communicating within the team on who should fix that issue. Um, then we moved forward to triaging within CloudTrail, trying to assess if there is a real user or only a service account. The Jira assignment and reassignment and reassignment within our org, code triage, code fix, and deploy to production. This time to uh, resolve the issue in our AWS account is just too long. So we try to understand how, how we can fix that. There must be a better way to understand who owns a resource, where, where a resource is maintained, where you're working at cloud at scale, and you're using infrastructure as code. So actually, there is a better way. Um, and the cloud providers will recommend uh, everyone to use tagging uh, as the first place to give additional context on your cloud inventory. And it has six main use cases. The first one is console organization, making sense in the cloud inventory and giving us the ability to consolidate resources by uh, specific groups, applications, or environments within our runtime environment. The second reason would be operational support. So if you are having an owner assigned as a tag, which is a free metadata, in GCP it is called label, on AWS, it's tags, Azure, it's tags, and in Oracle, it's freeform tags. And in Alibaba, I think it's also tags. Essentially, it's a key value uh, map that gives us, as an Algerius, the ability to give additional context, saying things like who owns this resource and which team is maintaining it, and who approved this production deployment. Those kinds of fields are really helping to shorten the time uh, for operational support, understanding who should fix an issue if there is one. Cost allocation, it would be usually used by another tag uh, of cost center. If you have multiple cost centers provisioning resources to a set of um, cloud environments, the ability to slice and dice who owns from a cost center perspective those resources, how analyzing how many each cost center is spending in the cloud, can be done only using tax. Risk management would be the ability to scope PCI or PII or any other kind of sensitive data on top of my cloud resources and giving that context to tax. Access control would be if I have a team that is owning the, those set of resources, this is the only team that can see them, modify them, delete them or, or update. And automation can be the ability to opt into a set of automations. For example, if I have a tag saying, hey, this is a dev environment resource, I can opt into automation processes that will shut down a VM on off hours because if an engineer is working on a dev resource and it's off hours, he probably, she, he or she does not need this resource anymore. So there, the list goes on and on. And the thing is, is when we started to, uh, to understand what are the best tags to use, it was an endless confluence page with workload name, business unit, cost center, approver name, the, the path to the source code, et cetera. And we ended up doing pull requests when we were editing infrastructure as code, uh, code blocks, saying to each other, hey, you forgot these 20 tags. It's a tedious manual task. We expected each and every engineer to read this huge confluence page, understand what's relevant for their own environment and modify the code accordingly. And when we added more and more tags, we understood that there are best practices to determine what tags are important and how to apply them. We understood that the tags should be agreed across multiple teams because my team wants to use the cost center tag and I want other teams to be able to slice and dice by the same key and volume. 
we should use tags consistently across all teams and within the different teams on top of those cloud resources. Because if one team would not apply those tags, it will just mean that our data trying to understand who owns a resource will be uh, broken. Um, and we understood that it's really hard to apply everything at once. So we started to focus on the most important things. And the most important thing in the cloud, even if you don't know who's the cost center or what's the source code path, or um, is it a dev environment or not? The first thing that you should have always is who owning that resource. Because that way, if there is missing data, you can ask the owner those kind of questions. And we also wanted to enforce untagged resources. Um, and one of the things that we learned from actually another open source uh, checkup, the one that Eric had mentioned before, is that the most common um, custom policy for policies code frameworks is stop a bill if it does not have a, the set of following tags before provisioning them. So we understood it's a real problem that not only we have, but others do. So we decided to do what we always do. We write code to solve problems. We created a new open source that was just released last week named Yor. So Yor is named after a, a very bad movie from 1983. Do not watch it, it's not that good, but it's about a time traveling warrior. Um, it's enabling us as engineers to travel between the code dimension and the cloud dimension. Um, and auto apply tags on top of infrastructure as code frameworks. It currently supports um, three infrastructure as code frameworks Terraform, Serverless, and CloudFormation. Where in Terraform, we support the three cloud providers Terra, um, AWS, GCP, and Azure. And 10 minutes ago, I got a pull request from an open source contributing contributor or adding Oracle Cloud. So we're expanding this. Um, and it comes with a set of best practices built in that will automatically tag your resources, assuming that you're using one of those frameworks. It's pretty easy to install. Um, just root tap if you're using Mac or Docker pool uh, using the following command, and it should tag all of the different resources, helping to connect the code, meaning the blueprint defined in infrastructure as code, and the running environment in one of the cloud providers. Answering questions like uh, which resources was pro were provisioned from this code block, and also how was it configured in source and where is the best place to fix it without the need to access sensitive data like state files or secrets that are maintained outside of the code and are scattered across different uh, secret stores, etc. It's only connecting code and cloud directly. So, how does it work? If you have a code block like our EBS, unencrypted EBS volume, and you have a set of tagging groups defined in your, it will actually add automatically data using Git log, using Git history. Things like what's the, com what's the last commit that this uh, resource was modified at? What's the path for it? Who's the last modifier? Nimrod Core, one of the engineers in the team, is the last modifier. Which GitHub org does it belong to? And your trace where each one of those fields giving us a lot of additional context to the cloud resources, the org trace is one of the most more interesting ones, giving us the ability to connect between a code block and the different instances that it has in cloud. So let's see how it looks on Security Hub, for example, which is a native tool um, to see security issues. I would be able to click on the tags and to identify, hey, this is actually the context that I was missing to fix resources much faster. I know who owns it. I know on what time it was modified. I know which repository it came from. And I can actually copy this specific string of your trace and paste it in my GitHub search. And even if I have 50 repositories, it will focus me directly on the resource that um, it belongs to. Let's see how it goes. So over here, I am installing uh, your uh, within my VS Code um, terminal. I have a set of tags like your trace, git repo, git file that are available by default. I'm going to tag my current directory and it's automatically adding those tags to my code block. And it even added the cost center that I belong to. 
and I can get the output of all of the additional tags that were added to my code, including the org trace. Then I can go to my AWS config, look for non-compliant resources, filter on, let's say, EC2 instances, take a look at the first one, it has various issues, and I can actually copy the org trace and even though I have more than 100 repositories, I can understand where did the change come from at once. So we can also do the same um, using CI CD pipeline. So I can run your locally on each and every action that I do, or even attach it to a pre-commit hook, making sure that I have those tags on each and every change that I'm doing. But I can also add your as a step within my CI CD pipeline in a way that uh, on each and every commit of infrastructure as code uh, or in each and every pull request, your will come in as a GitHub action in this example, commit the additional tags and traces. And when we will merge this into our main product and main branch that represents our production environment, for example, we'll be able to Terraform deploy or CloudFormation deploy or serverless deploy. Um, those resources to our cloud and trace it back from that moment from code to cloud. So there should be no need to have those giant confluence pages. So let's take a look on the um, uh, flow that I've configured in GitHub action. On each commit and push to main branch, I'm using the your action and I'm auto committing uh, on each and every change. Over here, I have already created an S3 bucket with a set of uh, commits on it. I created a new one. And let's see what did your do. And I can see that your have actually updated tags and including the modifier, which is myself, my own user, Shoster Barak. And let's see the additions that you have made in, in the automated your commit. And I can see that environment, git file, modifiers, and your trace were automatically added to my existing tags. So no need to maintain all of those uh, confluence pages with all of those different tags. So does it solve it all? Not, not entirely. Um, your is the framework that gives you the ability to automate tags on your CI pipeline. The thing that you should do next is probably agree as a team um, what are the important ones and what are the ones that are not mandatory and what are the keys and values that should be agreed on across your organization to enable you not only tracking from code to cloud, but also asking other questions like cloud spend and access control. Let's take, uh, a, take a deeper look on some of those examples. When you are defining it as a team, you have the first ability to say, um, hey, we're a huge team. There are over 100 different microservices and containers in our production environment. And it's really hard for us to communicate on ownership and um, apply to things like if you build it, you own it and you run. And your is actually helping us to make this com um, communication consistent because it's always showing us who should we talk with when we need help, when we have access issues to different cloud resources, or when we are just wanting to ask about an integration as an application team. So obviously it reduces the mean time to response, but the problem does not end in, in having a CI pipeline. You need to use PagerDuty, VictorOps, or any other incident um, scheduling system that you're using uh, to make it uh, uh, understand that you have a set of tags that it should uh, use to scatter issues across the teams and to focus on the relevant teams. So the thing that we've done is we've created a custom policy within your saying or custom tagging enforcement within your saying, if the user belongs to a security engineering team, add the security engineering team as a tag to the, this specific resource. And from that moment forward, every issue that we identify as a 
security issue, cost issue, operational issue is getting forwarded to PagerDuty with a tag that you already created. And it's getting um, alert. It's getting an alert to that team directly using the integration of the data that you have done and our incident management system, which is PagerDuty in, in, in that case, um, giving uh, the alert only to the team that is owning that resource. So I don't have an alert for a Jira ticket that is moving between 142 engineers. It's focusing on the team that is owning it, reducing a lot of the noise that we have in the organization. We can actually use your to enrich policies code engines like Charcoal. So your is adding data like who is the team that owns that resource. And Charcoal can have a policy set um, saying, hey, only allow specific team to edit specific configurations, which is kind of an authorization uh, and policy as code being uh, merged together. So let's take a look on, on one example. Uh, we have an AWS Cloud Trail. This is how you define it in Terraform. And the Git modifiers that you have added is Steve, Barack, and Matt. And this is because one of us have modified this resource across time. And our security team have uh, three other employees, Nimrod, Rotem, and Naor. And they've decided that they are the only ones that should make changes to CloudTrail configuration in Terraform. So we've created a, a simple policy in our policy as code um, saying, hey, I should have only a the security members editing this cloud trail configuration. And if the security team is those three guys and girl, um, the Git modifiers should be only from that specific team, from the security team. If it's not from the security team, if Steve, for example, have edited this cloud trail configuration, you should break the build and you should not approve this change until the security team is uh, approving it. So this is how the build will fail if you're using GitHub Action and you will see something like that um, because we do not comply with the policy. Another use case after integrating your with, enrich, uh, with policy engines like Chekhov or OPA or others is access control. If your is adding things like who's, who are the Git modifiers, I can define an IAM policy saying, hey, if I have an EC2 instance, that I've created and my username is Shoster Barak, only allow my own users to stop, start and stop my instance. That way I don't have other team members shutting down my instance while I'm working. So it's a fine grain and in this case, AWS IAM policy that is taking into account a condition based on the your tax. So it's also a tool to maintain least privileged um, conditions over cloud resources by the owners coming from the history. So what's the future for your? Um, so we've just added uh, a day ago, um, the ability to have YAML tags. Um, and you can define now, not only in Golang, you can define in YAML, what would be the tagging uh, enforcements that you'd like to automatically add to each and every uh, change in uh, infrastructure as code. We're going to add uh, support in Kubernetes manifest, and this is actually an invite for the community. Uh, if you want to join the open source con con uh, contribution of your, feel free uh, to, to give me a shout at, uh, at their repository or our Slack channel, Slack Bridge um, and um, be, be part of the contribution around uh, Kubernetes annotation, Hunter annotation, and, and, and customize which we're going to add um, and we're looking for people to work uh, with it on. Another use case for your is if you are having the ability to track from code to cloud, you can suddenly do things like drift detection and ask what are the resources that I've defined in code and trace to cloud that have different configuration in have drifts. And um, this is really an invite uh, to come and join and let us know uh, what, where would you like it to see go next. So what are the key takeaways that you should take with you when uh, working with your? Your is trying to help you uh, to, to have tags consistent 
in a consistent way without having a giant confluence pages in your uh, infrastructure as code. So tagging is a security problem uh, because if you do not know who's the owner of it, is, it means that you don't know who you should talk with when you have a security issue. This is why you should tag or label if you're using this thing, each and every resource within the cloud. And having a framework that will do that automatically for you will really grant you the visibility and control over your cloud resources when you're provisioning them to the cloud. We are making the assumption that we want to um, handle this issue very early on and shift left this issue. And like we've shifted left the requirement to provision resources using code frameworks like Terraform, we want to enable the same for tagging experience. Um, one way to start and accelerate the effort of having consistent tags is using open source tools like your, and you are more than invited to join our Slack community and, and help us to build new open sources or just be a contributor. It's under Apache 2 license of the your uh, repository. Right, I see that we have some questions and comments so I can uh, try to answer those now. So one question by Roberto is why don't have guardrails and auto remediation uh, want to allow any user or pipeline to create unencrypted EBS volumes. So definitely, you, you can have uh, guardrails in your CI-CD pipeline using tools like Chekhov to prevent unencrypted EBS volumes. The thing is, is you have hundreds of pipelines and you might miss something or you might have a manual modification of a resource directly in cloud. And the the tool Cherkov is really helping you to have this kind of guardrail. But um, as for um, having a consistent way to tag and owning a resource, that's where you, Cherkov cannot help you. A guardrail won't help you. You need an auto remediation step, and your would be that auto remediation step of having tags in a consistent way. I hope that helps. Um, moving to the next question by Luke. Uh, with Chekhov, is there a dynamic way to define access uh, through the use of groups uh, for teams? Yes, there can be. So you can define within your um, the mapping between uh, a Git user and their team. And in Chekhov, you can dynamically load that from a YAML file, Active Directory, Okta. It's written in Python, so you can define your own plugin and have that specific uh, Access. So I, I try to simplify it in my example policy to have a list of users, but internally uh, in production, we have actually created this kind of plugin querying uh, uh, an Active Directory system. Um, another question from Tyler and Tyler, is your AWS only? No, so you're supporting three cloud providers and uh, we just got a pull request to support a fourth one. Um, and which is Oracle. So thank you for the open source contribution. Um, and I'm focusing on AWS only because it's the one that I'm most familiar with and the community is most familiar with, but it should work with any cloud provider. And another one by uh, Olusgan, I hope I, I've pronounced the name correctly. Uh, do you think there would be an information disclosure risk with, with tagging? So one thing that is uh, that I've seen in PCI environments is that people are defining which data source, databases, and, and uh, instances like EC2 instances are in scope for PCI, meaning hold, might hold credit card data or sensitive data um, in banking environments, for example. Um, and people are tagging those resources with a tag like is PCI scope. And similar can be found for GDPR, GDPR regulated environments where you want to have a tag whether a resource is touching PII or not touching PII, personal identified, uh, identifier information uh, within the cloud. So yes, they are being used for uh, risk uh, disclosure. How would uh, another question by Tyler, 
Uh, and Eric, please let me know if I'm uh, uh, <laughs> doing great, man. To... Keep rolling. We've got All some right. time. Uh, how would you integrate tagging with a corporate CMDB tool uh, to have a centralized data? Great question. So it's a personal belief, but I believe that uh, the new CMDB tool in a few years from now would be GitHub. Uh, it's actually the CMDB that we have uh, as an infrastructure as code shop. If I want to know what inventory I have in my cloud, in an, even in some of the SaaS platforms, the place, the place that I query is our code because everything is managing infrastructure as code. So I believe that Terraform is kind of a CMDB tool because it's holding my entire inventory parameters and, and environments. So your is the, is the automation tool to update tags on top of this CMDB. Um, but if you're using another kind of CMDB like service now and others, if it has an integration to your cloud environment, it can draw those tags from the CMDB, from the cloud environment into that CMDB tool. Excellent. So I think that answers all the questions that we've got. Let's see, one more in here. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that one. And then I've got one follow-up question for you as well while we've got a minute. All right. So uh, by Lethier, uh, it's critical for teams to have centralized visibility, the ability to track deployments, configuration, and the opportunity to gain intelligence about cloud changes um, and whether they are compliant. Oh, I think it's just a statement and not a question. Yes, it is super important. Yeah, agreed. Um, I had a, a question just technically. So, you know, in the demo, we we created this new resource that was kind of missing tags and it kind of injected some of the Git metadata and things like that. Is it looking at when I modify a resource as well and updating the commit? So the values are always, you know, the last time that thing was touched or is it just initial creation that it's tracking? So yes, it is updating on each and every change. The thing that you should do uh, to configure it that way is to have your GitHub action that is running your to run on each and every commit. And from that way forward, uh, from that moment forward, your will update each and every change that someone is doing. So let's say that you've created an S3 bucket and your teammate have added encryption and another one have added versioning, et cetera. It will list the three of you as an array of modifiers, three people that have touched this bucket and are owning it now that it is on production. Very cool. Yeah, so that's just a continuous history of kind of who's been involved in, in modifying or creating that resource. That's that's excellent. A uh, really cool project. Um, I've got a number of people in Slack, you know, here in the US saying this was worth getting up at at 3 a.m. to uh, to drop in and watch. So lots of good feedback there. I, I look forward to kind of seeing this project grow and uh, and become mainstream like some of the other open source projects that you all have worked on. So really awesome work thank you very much for dropping in and sharing this with us thank you it was a pleasure